how to jumpstart ACL healing without surgery. Three steps. Step number one, know the data. First, for young, previously active individuals with an ACL tear, per recent randomized control trial data, 33 to 50% of the time, the ligament can reattach itself without surgery with exercise alone. Second, cyclic tension at shallow knee angles, which is exactly what I'm doing right now, activates living cells in the ACL to create thicker and stronger ligament over time. Third, backwards walking on a treadmill increases VMO muscle activation, which is the most fast twitch of the quad muscles, primarily responsible for stabilizing the kneecap in single leg positions. Step number two, progress according to that data. Let's go ahead and zoom in here so you can see what I mean. Walking backwards produces cyclic tension that becomes harder as I extend, which would progress the cyclic tension that becomes harder as I flex. This flexing motion is going to load the ACL for more time and greater intensity than walking backwards, which could be seen in our Poliquin step progressions on the program. But because of the low level of intensity with walking backwards, we can walk backwards for longer, leading to more mind muscle connection as a result onto the quads. We need both to progress accordingly to the data we just read. Step number three, understand the science. The power of life is in the blood. Not to get biblical on you, but there's immense truth to this verse. Research shows that each stage of ligament healing depends upon an adequate blood supply for the delivery and removal of cells and metabolic substrates at the site of injury, which is why in my protocols, I'm a huge advocate for something as simple as a pair of floss bands to increase that blood supply accordingly. The power of life is in the blood. The prevailing view has that once the ACL is ruptured, its capacity for self-healing is limited if there is any healing at all. However, anatomical studies have shown that the ACL has a rich blood supply and that it undergoes typical healing phases after injury, which just has a slower rate and reduced capacity compared to other tissues. Some seven times slower than that of muscular tissue. And yes, even ACL grafts can heal, but just take a bit longer to do so. Let's go a bit deeper into the ACL's blood supply so we know a little bit more about what we're dealing with. The main source of blood supply to the ACL, the middle geniculate artery. This literally means artery in the middle running at a sharp angle. It also supplies the PCL, meniscus, and synovial membrane. This artery stems from the popliteal artery, which stems from the femoral artery, which stems from the iliac artery, which stems from the aorta, which finally comes from the heart. From the heart to this tiny middle geniculate artery, your vascular system is intimately connected to the ACL. It's truly amazing to consider. Now, how exactly does the ACL get this blood? The middle geniculate artery actually supplies the synovial tissue around the ACL, whose job is to keep that ligament nourished and lubricated. More reliance on compressive forces or convection diffusion onto its synovial tissue, much like the cartilage receives nutrition from compression. Basically what happens is this, cyclic compression, think gradients of knee bend in and out of flexion, which helps to increase synovial fluid movement in the knee, which brings a ton of nutrients with it. Once these nutrients get into the joint and cover the ACL, they move from the synovial fluid into the ACL's synovial tissue. Because its nutrition is motion dependent, it's crucial to get regular stimulus of the body in full knee bend where compression is the highest. So although cyclic tension at shallow knee angles is the best stimulus for increasing ACL size and thickness, cyclic compression at deep knee angles is the best stimulus for not only cartilage and meniscus health, but ACL nutrition as well. Some other fun facts to consider, blood perfusion during exercise increases ACL collagen synthesis and well-planned progressive exercise is needed to ensure only a slight increase in this oxidative stress to the ligament to lead to an adaptive response. Meaning, very simply, if you overcook the ACL, you won't activate these processes, you'll actually damage them. You need to work smarter, not harder. For my client, Michael, this is exactly what it took for him to jumpstart his ACL healing, all without surgery. But don't just take my word for it. I'm gonna let Michael become the star of this video. I'll just overlay some video of his exercise progression as it is relevant, but without further ado, here's the legend himself speaking about his recovery journey. Hello, everyone. So the 13th of December, I had the major knee injury on my left Knee, which caused third grade tear on my ACL and a meniscus tear. For about two to three weeks, I couldn't walk. I was limping all over the place. My knee was a balloon, like literally swelling was so much. I started to do my own program, which consists of a lot of isometrics, wall sits, leg extensions, and a lot, a lot of box squats. After about a month, I saw a video on YouTube about Coach Kenny telling us about how the body is capable of regenerating the ligament by itself. I decided to follow his program. After like 
week, six weeks, five weeks, I started to see some notable differences. My squat was getting deeper. My knee flexion was getting amazingly better. I didn't feel pain. The swelling was starting to go down a little bit. My knee was starting to feel like the other knee. Thanks to God. I did my first MRI four weeks, a month after the injury. Showed the third uh, great tear on my ligament and the meniscus tear. After like three months, I decided to make another MRI. And it showed that the meniscus is starting to heal by itself. While the ligament is starting to heal also. So I told myself, okay, let's keep going. Let's keep grinding every day, getting 1% better every day, doing the polyquin, the ATG split squats, the VMO squats, that pull, treadmill backwards. And also I implemented a lot of plyometrics, a lot of acceleration. Also I regressed a lot of exercise. After three months, I got back on the court. I played my first game after the injury. I had a solid game. I played for about 30 minutes. I can't deny that I 20 minute mark let's say i started to feel some discomfort on my knee i played a lot <laughs> i'm not going to lie for someone who just has had uh, an ACL tear if we talk about other stuff that i did was the nutrition factor eating meat eggs rice i didn't neglect it and also i took uh, omega-3 collagen creatine magnesium to help me sleep better to get that regeneration as fast as possible at the fifth month i decided to go back uh, to the doctor to see if we plan to make a surgery so we did the lachman test we did uh, other the external rotation, internal rotation, stability, acceleration. And he told me that for now, right now, it's more harmful to do the surgery than to let it heal by itself. The knee is stable, it's strong, the ligament is getting healed. Last Monday, last week, I had my last MRI, the third one. It showed that my ligament was 50% better. It's attaching. A relief you can't imagine. A breath of uh, fresh air, super, super, deeper, upper. Happy. I can't deny that I was emotional. I started to cry because it's something that uh, I sacrificed i said a lot you guys can't imagine how much time i spent studying like i have notebooks about coach kenny principles the atg principles everything so i was super hyper happy that the work has paid off now i'm going for the seven month and i'm still going i'm still going i'm happy thanks to god everything is okay i want to see if i can reconstruct as much as, as much ligament as possible i can deny that thanks to god i'm lucky because my body can regenerate and heal by itself my quad is muscular i have muscles on it but uh, it lacks of power there is no explosiveness like i used to it's a roller coaster i need to start from the bottom and get up, 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 up. i want to say that thank you to coach kenny thanks to god thanks for my family thanks for everybody who supported me through this journey i want to inspire people i want to help people i want to tell them that it's possible if you can avoid the surgery why not try these principles if you want do like three months if it didn't work if it didn't feel better and go for the surgery but for me i saw the improvement i saw some gains I'm not going to lie and I want to keep going. In the future, maybe if it didn't heal, I might go for the surgery. But right now, thanks to God, everything is okay. Thank you guys. I want to inspire people. That's my goal. Thank you. To reiterate about something that Michael said, it's a roller coaster. His healing journey has absolutely been a roller coaster. But he's easily been the most dedicated client that I've ever had, sometimes to his own detriment. I don't think he'll mind me sharing about this, but about two weeks before his third MRI scan, he did have a little bit of a scare. While he was doing some moves on the court, we think he may have had a dislocation, relocation kind of incident, and it really freaked him out. So it made me reevaluate things as far as what could I have done better to prevent this as his coach and then I realized I never asked him how often he's on the court in the first place for full context for anyone on our programming systems who is not only dealing with an injury but just in general we advocate for one maybe two times per week of on court sport work going with high intensity so that you can recover in the subsequent week when I inquired about how often he was on the court it was not one not two times per week but three usually four to five times per week on the court while he was even doing some of these exercises this is way too much loading especially for someone just coming back from a full thickness ACL tear. But Michael, being one of the most diligent clients I've ever had, is also one of the very most coachable and humble clients in the context of regressing his exercise accordingly. We dialed things back and this recent scare ended up being completely okay, as his ligament was indeed safe and was found on that recent MRI to reach 50% healing, which is leagues above the healing that was gained from the second MRI. So this is a clear demonstration of how patient one must be, not just for an ACL tear, but for any injury. The little wins are what stack up, but if you 
you can't stay in the game to stack those little wins, you're not going to recover over the long haul. We gotta train according to the truth. This takes time. If any of this is an encouragement to you and you'd like to know where to begin, start just by reaching out to me. Either comment, DM, email, I reply to all of them. If you want local training, I'm available for one-on-one -on -one or group work in Borman, Ohio at the Youngstown Wellness Lab. If instead you'd like trained through the ATG app, I have my own program on there called ATG Science and it's exactly what Michael did to get back following his full thickness ACL tear. Thank you for tuning in. Here's your greater pursuit of truth.